Hi everyone, this is a gardening pod for a hydroponic project I'm working on. I printed this with standard slicer profile on Kira and at first glance it looks good. The print is sturdy enough and I don't really need it to be perfect for what I'm using it for. However, it does have one imperfection that works as a great example for what I want to show today. The model was printed in this tower-like orientation and on top there's some overhanging problems visible on the, on the underside. This looks like a spaghetti mess and I want to inspect the G-code to see where things went wrong. Here I have the STL model in Kira. I often use Kira for, as my main slicing profile because I find the default settings very reliable for Ender 3s and other printers like it. I also find it simple to use and the interface is also very clean. However, there do, are some downsides. Not all of the options are visible by default, so sometimes you have to already know what to search for in order to have the options appear. In my opinion, this is a little bit of a barrier to learning advanced usage of the slicer. Let's clear the settings and set everything back to the default standard profile. Now I'm going to go ahead and just slice the model. In preview mode, I can inspect the G-code to see how it's instructing my printer to print the model. I'm interested in this area on top. I want to adjust the, this vertical bar to find the layer where this roof area first started. All right, so once I get to the right spot, I want to change the horizontal bar in order to see exactly how this area is printed and understand why there's overhangs. While I'm scrubbing the bar, I'm going to animate how the nozzle is going to move. I'm going back in time to the beginning. Here we see a problem at the very start of this layer. The nozzle is drawing the inner wall on top of thin air. This is going to leave a long string of filament at the end of the nozzle and eventually turn to a spaghetti mess. The reason for this is because Kira's base algorithm prints the inner walls first. So getting rid of the pinhole in the center is one way to solve the problem because it would have removed the need for the inner walls. If this model didn't have a hole there, then there would likely be no overhang problems at all because the size of the area was small enough for the nozzle to zigzag across without issues. This pinhole isn't really necessary for my project, but what if it was a crucial part of my model? Why can't the printer just print from the outside going in? Unfortunately, this is a limitation with Kira, and there's already a ticket on the GitHub repo about this very issue. There are two settings I see people in the community suggest when encountering these problems, but both of them have issues. Outer wall, outer before inner walls is a setting that changes the wall order, but the inner wall will still print over thin air. The other setting is infill before walls, and this does reduce some of the problems. However, a crucial flaw is that what we are seeing here on the layer is not an infill, this is actually a skin. Skins are the inner parts of the layer, but for only for the top and bottom surfaces. So the infill before walls settings would not change the behavior for the first couple of layers. Currently, there are no settings to print skins before walls. If we had a setting like that, the inner walls would have something to latch onto. Even better, if we had a setting to print from the outside going inwards on these type of geometry. Maybe a true solution will finally make its way to Kira's official release in the future. But for now, there is one setting that does give us a very close solution. That setting is part of the experimental category. Now, experimental sounds unreliable, but many of the settings in this category have given the printing community a very nice surprise, such as tree supports. So don't sleep on these settings. So we have to enable it from the setting visibility or you can go ahead and search for it from the search bar and the setting is called make overhangs printable. What this setting does is that it targets parts of the model that would be considered an overhang based on the overhang setting and tweak the geometry just enough in a way that will allow the slicer's algorithms to avoid printing in midair. Obviously the drawback is that it does change the geometry of the print just a tiny bit but for practical prints, this might be a suitable compromise. As you can see here, the roof now has a little extra geometry. There's more of a cone-shaped structure underneath the roof compared to before. The change is subtle and doesn't affect the functionality of the print. In the preview of the layers, we can see that it no longer prints on thin air, and there's more infill in the roof. 
I printed out this model and it's clear that there's no mess under the roof. The print came out clean. I'll show both of them for comparison. So this is not a bad solution to the issue and the setting is just a click away. There are two downsides to this method. One, the extra geometry means it will cost more material and time to print compared to the original design. And secondly, the change in geometry might be a deal breaker if it doesn't fit with your project, such as toy models or figurines. So really just use your best judgment after previewing the G-code in the slicer. That's pretty much it, and I hope this video has given you some ideas on how to fix your prints. Thanks again for watching this short video, and until next time, stay dorky.